Hello, and welcome to the final video on trigonometry. In this video, we're going to be learning how to graph sine and cosine. However, before we get into that, there are a few angles that we have not talked about yet, which are 0, 90, 180, 270, and 360 degrees. Now, these angles are so important because they mark the split in a quadrant. So 0, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees. And of course, 0 is the coterminal angle to 360 degrees. It's the same, different angles, but same exact position. So these angles are very important because notice they do split apart the quadrants. Now, we've talked about how to figure out any trig function for any angle could be an angle between 0 and 90 or could not be. We could still figure it out. However, we never discussed what sine or cosine would be at these angles in particular because they're a little bit weird. So let's take a look at it. So let's say that we had an angle here that was really small that was really close to zero degrees. Let's call that theta. And this is an angle that's really tiny, really close to zero degrees. Notice that the opposite side, if we're finding sine of theta, the opposite side is going to be really small. And the hypotenuse is going to be fairly large. So of course, a small number divided by a bigger number gives you a number less than one. Now think about that angle getting smaller and smaller and smaller. The smaller this angle gets, the more sine or the opposite side gets to zero. So eventually when that angle is zero, the opposite side is zero. Therefore, sine of zero would be zero divided by the hypotenuse, which is just zero. You see? Now, let's try to envision an angle getting bigger and bigger and bigger towards 90 degrees. So let's say we're working with this angle theta right here in green. Notice that the opposite side will be the same as the hypotenuse when the angle is 90 degrees. So therefore, if they're the same, if the opposite side and the hypotenuse are the same, then sine of 90 degrees would be one. Now let's take a look at 180 degrees. Let's say that we have an angle getting closer and closer to 180 degrees. Notice again that the side opposite to theta, again if we're looking at the reference angle, is going to be really small. So as the angle theta gets closer and closer, closer to 180, the opposite side is going to be getting closer and closer and closer to zero. So sine is getting closer and closer and closer to zero. Therefore, at 180 degrees, sine of 180 would be zero again. Now let's say we have an angle getting closer and closer to 270 degrees. So let's say we have this angle here, theta. Notice this would be the reference triangle right here. Notice that the side opposite is going to be getting closer and closer and closer to the same length as the hypotenuse but this time in the negative direction. Therefore, sine of 270 would be negative 1. And finally, working our way back to 360, which is the coterminal angle to 0, it would be 0 again. So to visualize these, try to envision what the what's happening to the opposite side as the angle gets closer and closer and closer to these angles. So again, as the angle is close to zero, the opposite side is getting closer to zero. As the angle gets closer to 90 degrees, the opposite side is getting closer to the same length as the hypotenuse, and so on and so forth. Same thing could be said about the cosine. So for cosine of zero degrees, notice the adjacent side to the angle is going to be getting bigger and bigger and bigger and closer to the hypotenuse. So at zero degrees, the adjacent side and the hypotenuse are the same. Therefore, cosine of zero would be one. 
as the angle approaches 90 degrees, notice the adjacent side is getting smaller and it's going towards zero. So at 90 degrees, the adjacent side is zero. So zero divided by the hypotenuse is zero. At 180 degrees, notice the adjacent side is getting closer and closer to the length of the hypotenuse, however, in the negative direction. Therefore, cosine of 180 degrees would be equal to negative 1. And finally, at 270 degrees, the adjacent side is getting closer to 0. Notice the adjacent side to the um, right triangle here. As it gets closer to 270 degrees, is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So at 270 degrees, the adjacent side would be 0. So cosine of 270 would be 0. And finally, at 360 degrees, which is complementary, which is coterminal to 0, cosine would be 1 again. So at the end of the day, really, this was the, the logical explanation as to why we have these values. However, in order to speed things up, it's actually a good idea to just memorize this table and be able to really quickly answer what sine or cosine of these five angles in particular are. They're very easy to, to memorize. They have a pretty simple pattern and they're going to become very useful when we graph. So let's go ahead and graph this function. Y equals sine of X. Notice that the input is the angle and we're going to use x to represent the angle because we want to graph this on an xy coordinate. So I've taken the liberty here of showing you a few important values. Here, x again is the angle, and y is the solution to sine of that angle, which is really just the ratio of opposite to hypotenuse. So we get these values. Now, of course, we can this table can be infinitely long, but I'm just really trying to graph these points in particular because this here represents one full revolution. So here we have zero. Let's say that this is 360 degrees. Let's say that this is 180 degrees. Let's say that this is then 90 degrees and then 270 degrees. Now, of course, if we're working in radians, which is actually more common, instead of putting it in degrees, we'd say that this is 2 pi, this is pi, this is pi over 2, and this is 3 pi over 2. So it really just depends on which unit you're going to be working with. But it's going to have the same shape. Let's say this is 1, and this is minus 1. So... At x equals 0, that means the angle is 0, y is 0, so sine of 0 is 0. At 90 degrees, or pi over 2 radians, y is equal to 1. I skipped over 45, so at 45, which is half of 90, which would be around here, or pi over 4, we'd get 0 0.707, which would be somewhere around here. Now, of course, you could plot a lot more points, but I'm just using these points in particular to help speed things up. At 180 degrees, y is 0. At 270 degrees, y is negative 1. And at 360 degrees, y is 0 again. So if we were to connect the dots, we're going to get a shape that looks like this. Kind of like a wave. And that is one full revolution. What this graph represents is sine of any angle. And of course, the main points here to plot are 0, 90, 180, 270, 360. But notice that all the answers are going to range between minus 1 and 1. And it's going to have this wave type shape. This is called a sinusoidal graph. Now, of course, as we said before, angles continue forever. 
But because it's cyclical, the pattern just repeats itself all over again. So in reality, this is just going to continue going like this forever this way and like this forever this way as well. And it will continue in this um, pattern forever. However, we just want to focus on one of these waves. So let's learn some vocabulary here. So this here, the distance of one wave is called the period. So within that period, this wave is completely unique. So basically the period you can copy and paste and you'll get the same pattern over and over and over again. So normally the length of the period is just 360 degrees or two pi radians. Now the distance from the x-axis to one of the peaks this is called the amplitude. So notice in this example, the amplitude is 1. Now, typically when graphing, we should get used to working in radians. Most of the time, when we graph a trig function, we want to be using radians as the unit of angles. So here again, I'm showing here a table of all the important angles, 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. So in degrees, 0, 90, 180, 270, and 360. And of course, these are the solutions to sine of those angles. So if we were to plot this, we would get 0, 1, 0, negative 1, and 0. So again, the period here is 2 pi. Now, of course, this continues forever, but when we're graphing this, really you just have to look at one period because again, the rest of the graph will continue in the exact same pattern. So if you know how one looks, you know how the entire graph looks like. And notice here as well that the amplitude is one, that the height from this central line or the x-axis up to one of the peaks is 1. How, now let's say that we wanted to graph y equals 2 sine x. If you remember with transformations, when you multiply by a number, you're going to cause it to expand. So if we're going to be multiplying by 2, that's going to cause all the values of y to expand by 2. So the easiest values here to plot would just be, well, 1 times 2 is 2. Of course, 0 times 2 is 0. 0 times 2 is 0. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. And 0 times 2 is 0. So our graph here has vertically expanded. But notice really all that changed here is the amplitude. So the amplitude now is 2, where in the original one, the amplitude was 1. So if you're noticing a pattern here, notice that the number that multiplies sine is going to be the amplitude. And that should make it a lot easier to graph. Let's do one more. How about if we wanted to graph y equals 1 half sine x. So now understanding the pattern, this here is going to be the amplitude of the sine graph. So instead of the amplitude being 1, notice here the amplitude is going to be half instead. And you could think of it as a um, vertical transformation but with a sine function, it's a lot easier to just think of it as an amplitude change. And there we go. The amplitude now has a height of 1 half.
So let's say here that we want to graph y equals negative sine x. If you remember, this will cause a vertical reflection. So, and notice here that the amplitude is still going to be 1. Technically, the amplitude is the absolute value of the number that's multiplying because the amplitude represents a height and there's really no such thing as a negative height. So here you'd say the amplitude is still 1, however the negative is indicating that the graph of sine has been reflected vertically. Therefore, all of these points flip over and we get our graph that looks like this instead. And that was our vertical reflection. So in this lesson, this is as far as we're going to go. There are many other transformations to the graph of sine, but for the scope of this class, we're just going to focus on the amplitude and the vertical reflections, and that is it. So, here I have drawn a graph of the original function y equals sine x. This is just one period with no transformations, no change in amplitude, no nothing. So take a minute and attempt to graph the function y equals negative 2 sine x. Graph that and compare it to the original function y equals sine x. So pause this video, try to do this on your own, and when you press play, the answers will show up in a few seconds. And there you have it. This is the graph of one period of y equals negative 2 sine x. Notice all that happened here was the amplitude changed to 2. So notice that the new height of the new graph is 2. And it has been reflected. So now instead of starting by going up, it starts by going down instead. So... Here I, I'm giving you guys the values of cosine at these special angles, 0, pi over 2, or 90 degrees, pi radians, or 180 degrees, 3 pi over 2 radians, or 270 degrees, and 2 pi radians, or 360 degrees. Again, this here represents one cycle, or one full revolution, therefore giving us one period. So, however, here's the big difference. Cosine of 0 is 1, so we're actually starting up here at 1. Then at pi over 2, we go straight to, to 0. At pi, we go to negative 1. At 3 pi divided by 2 radians, we go back to 0. And then at 2 pi, we are back to 1. So notice, if we connect the dots, this here is the graph of one period of cosine. Now imagine this continuing in the same pattern, which is what's going to happen. Notice it actually almost looks identical to sine. Because they're actually, at the end of the day, they're essentially the same graph, except cosine, you could think of it as sine being shifted to the left by pi over 2 radians, therefore starting at 1 instead. But when we're dealing with cosine, you just have to remember that it normally will start at 1 instead, and then work its way down and come right back up. And that is one full period, and it will continue in this cycle forever. Again, if you copy and paste this one period, you will then get this wave type graph. Vocabulary is exactly the same. The amplitude is still the height from the center to the top. This is the amplitude. And just like sine, we're going to be using the same exact method, just with a slightly different looking graph. So here is the graph of y equals cosine x. Let's say we wanted to graph y equals negative 3 
cosine x. It's the same exact problem as with as sine, except with the graph of cosine. Notice here the amplitude would be 3, but the negative means that there's a vertical reflection. Therefore, we can do this in two steps if you want. The amplitude would be 3. So notice that it's basically all it is is a vertical expansion by 3. And there we go. It's the same graph of cosine, except it's just been expanded so that the amplitude is now 3 instead. But then we have to reflect it vertically. So the final answer would look something like this. Right there. And that's it. So the one in solid green is the final graph of one period of negative 3 cosine x. Of course, technically, this graph will continue forever. If you type in negative 3 cosine x on a graphing calculator, you'll see that the graph continues forever. But this is one period, meaning you can just copy and paste this cycle, and you will get then a wave type sinusoidal graph. So here I've drawn one period of y equals cosine x, the parent function cosine x. Now, in this problem, I want you to pause this video and graph y equals negative half cosine x. See if you can compare it to the parent function. As soon as you press play, the answer will show up in a few seconds. And there you have it. This is the graph of y equals negative half cosine x. Notice the amplitude is half, meaning you could think of it as a vertical compression by half, and it has been reflected vertically. So that just about wraps up our course in trigonometry. So keep practicing, keep studying, and you will get this in no time. See you later. Bye.